topic we are dealing with today is skewness and ketosis. Many statistics students are confused with these two topics, although they are easy like anything. So I will just introduce the topic of skewness first. Now to understand skewness, you first need to know about something called a normal distribution. Normal distribution. Now what is so normal about this normal distribution? Well, it's a distribution that looks somewhat like this on the graph. This distribution is a bell-shaped distribution and one characteristic of this distribution is that it is symmetrical, which means that if you draw a line in the center, then the two parts you get are mirror images of each other. So it's a symmetric and bell-shaped distribution. Another beautiful thing about this distribution is that this center point is its mean, while the median is equal to this mean, while the mode is also equal to the same. So with, this means that in the normal distribution, the mean, the median and the mode go inside. So that is a normal distribution. Now what is skewness? Well, in one word, skewness refers to the, the fact that a distribution is off center, off center. So let's say I have a distribution which looks somewhat like this or a distribution which looks somewhat like that. So you see in both these distributions there is a hump and there is a tail. A hump and a tail. In this case the tail points towards a positive direction of the x-axis. So this kind of a distribution is known as a positively skewed distribution. Positively skewed. While this one because the tail points to the left, to the negative x-axis, this is known as a negatively skewed distribution. Negatively skewed. Now, contrary to the normal distribution where the mean, the median and the mode coincide, the three measures of central tendency are scattered in both these kinds of distribution. You will find your mode here. The mode is a point where the highest frequency occurs. Median somewhat to the right of the mode. Median is something that divides this area into two equal halves. While the mean lies to the right of the median. Similarly, in a negatively skewed distribution, these three measures of central tendency are dispersed. This is the mode. While the median is somewhat to the left of it. While the mean is to the left of the, of the, uh, the median. Let's take an example. Now let's, let's jump into the reality. Where would you typically find a distribution like this or that? Now take an example. Let's say in one fine year, uh, the nature smiles on students so that the CBSC class 12 board exam is really easy. It's a cakewalk. While the examiners are also very lenient. With the result that most of the students end up scoring somewhere in the 80s and 90s. In that case, you're likely to have a distribution like this. Let's say this denotes, let's say the y-axis denotes the frequency, while the x-axis denotes the marks 10, 20, 30, and so on, 80 and 90. You find most of the students concentrated in the 80s, 90s, bunch of it. Whereas, contrary to this, if you have a test which was a hard nut to crack, an exam which was really difficult, then you would end up with a distribution like that, with most of the students scoring less than 50. So that's about skewness. Now that's about that's that's the graph, the graphical part of it. We need to look at the coefficients of skewness. Now, um, in fact, this is what you you will be tested in the university exam. So we have four coefficients of skewness. I shall discuss every one of them. Um, now the first one. Pearsonian coefficient of skewness. We're going to study about this man called Carl Pearson a little too often in your stats course, the very famous statistician. So, this Pearsonian coefficient of skewness is denoted by the symbol SK with a P as a subscript. Now, Pearsonian coefficient of skewness is equal to the mean minus mode divided by S, which means standard deviation. 
Remember, standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. This coefficient of skewness is being measured relative to the dispersion of the distribution. Now, you must be knowing uh, an empirical formula between mean, median, and mode, which is mean minus mode is equal to 3 mean minus the, me the median. So if, we, if I plug this value in the numerator, I shall get another expression for the same. Uh, Pearsonian coefficient of skewness equals 3 mean minus median upon the standard deviation. Now carefully notice, if I have a positively skewed distribution, my mean is greater than the mode, which means this numerator is going to be positive. But well, standard deviation shall always be positive, since it is a positive square root of variance. Whereas if I have a negatively skewed distribution, the mode is greater than the mean, which means the numerator is going to be negative. So, in a cru so the crux of it is that if your answer for this coefficient is positive, then this implies that your distribution is positively skewed. If your answer is negative, this implies that your distribution is negatively skewed. And what happens if the answer is zero? Well, this means that x bar is equal to the mode, which means both the measures of central tendency coincide, in which case this shall be a symmetric distribution. Symmetric distribution. Switching on to the next coefficient of skewness, which the second one, quartile coefficient of skewness. Now, quartile coefficient of skewness, which is written as SK with the subscript Q, is equal to Q3 minus the median minus median minus Q1 upon Q3 minus Q1. Q1 is the first quartile, Q3 is the third quartile. Now, if we, sh if we see this on the graph, we'll find that the, if the, well, the median lies somewhere here, Q1 is here, and Q3 would be somewhere here. So that one fourth of the area lies to the right, right of it, and three fourth to the left of it. Now, if you see the positively skewed distribution, Q3 minus the median, this area, is greater than the median minus Q1, this area with the end result that the numerator in this formula will be positive. This means, while this will be opposite in a negatively skewed distribution, so while this formula will yield a positive result for a positively skewed distribution, it will yield a negative result for the negatively skewed distribution. No big deal about that. Third coefficient of skewness is the percentile coefficient of skewness. divide a distribution into 100 equal areas. So we shall use P percentile 10 and percentile 90 in this formula. So this formula would be, uh, let's write down percentile coefficient of skewness is equal to P90 minus the median. Median is, is nothing but the P50 minus median minus P10 upon P90 minus P10. This formula on the whole will measure whether your distribution is positively skewed or negatively skewed while the same sign rule shall hold. Now, another coefficient of skewness is in terms of moments. I hope you would have studied about moments. moments. Uh, it's not that hard. Well, in general, the rth moment about a mean is nothing but the deviation from the mean raised to the power r summed together and divided by n. In this coefficient for skewness, we shall use the third moment, which is denoted by mu3, which is nothing but sigma xi minus x bar raised to power 3 divided by the sample size or n. So the moment coefficient of skewness, which is A3, it is denoted by A3, is equal to mu3. The moment coefficient of, uh, the third moment about the mean in the numerator divided by standard deviation raised to the power 
are three. There are lots of threes in this formula, so you won't have a trouble remembering this. The same sign rule for skewness again holds. If the answer is zero, you're landing up on a symmetric distribution. If the answer is positive, your distribution is positively skewed. If it's negative, it's negatively 